We've done a little bit of geometry scripting in a previous video, and if you haven't seen that one yet, I do recommend you go check that out, because today we're going to be implementing a lot of things that we talked about in that video. So in that video, we made this little ramp builder where we can cut out spheres, or uh, we can just have this be a block and do whatever we want with it. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to be making something a little more like this. And here you can definitely see uh, a little bit more complexity than just a block with something taken out of it. This is entirely procedural. So we have a bottom left point here, we have a top right point, and we have a archway that will get cut out of a wall segment, dependent on those two points. The wall itself can be changed as well. And of course, we can make some depth with that as well. And if we now pull this down far enough, it changes from a archway in a wall to a doorway or a tunnel, as you can see right here. Uh, and pull this down a little bit, suddenly we have a tunnel. So this is multi-purpose stuff. Let's get into making it in the other projects. If you want this project with both of these assets, the one that we made last time to look around with and the one that we were about to make, uh, there's a link down below in the description to my Patreon where you can download the project files with all of these assets included. For now, let's get started making a new blueprint class and that will be a generated dynamic mesh actor, assuming that you have the plugin installed and we'll call that BP Archway Generator. We'll go into the event graph, get rid of all these events, and we'll add a on rebuild generated mesh. And let's start off by making the variables for the three handles that we have. So we have the corner, which will be a vector that will be publicly available, and we want to show 3D widget for that one as well. Then we want to make one for the bottom corner and one for the top corner for the archway itself both of which are also going to be publicly available, and they're going to show 3D widgets. For my example, I gave these a default value of 100, 100, 500 for the top corner. The bottom corner will be 1, 100, 100, and the top corner will be set to uh, 1, 400, 300. Now, what we're going to do uh, at first is we're going to kind of lock the X position of our bottom corner and our top corner here, because we don't want those to be moving around a lot. We're going to be using those in some calculations, and we want them to always be just up on the front of our archway. So we will uh, set the bottom corner, and we'll set the top corner, and for both of those, we're going to split the structure pin. And then we will get those values as well, and we'll split those two. Then we just simply set the X value for both of them to one, and the Y and Z values we will set to whatever they are as is. So this way, whatever we do with the X position, anytime this function runs, which is whenever we change something about this dynamic mesh actor, uh, the X position is going to be reset back to one, where we always want it to be. Well, that all out of the way, uh, let's get started by appending a box, because that's what we do with the most basic shit, right? We append a box, and we want to give it the dimension corresponding to the corner piece here. Split the structure pin, the X and the X, the Y and the Y, the Z and the Z. And then we want to offset that in location with the Z will be offset 0, the X will be the X value divided by 2 into the transform location x, and for the y, we will do the same thing, the y into the y. This way we have a easy handle uh, with the corner to work with. Now, this is mostly stuff we've done before. Uh, now we're going to allocate a compute mesh, which means that we're going to be using whatever we put out of here for the Boolean operation that we're gonna be doing in a second. And we're just going to simply make a box to cut out first. We're going to make two different boolean operations happen, one in the shape of a box for the little square part of the window, and then we're going to use a cylinder later on for the round top part of the window. We want to split the structure pin for the transform, and from there split the structure pin for the 
location. And here we're going to use our bottom corner and our top corner locations to uh, decide where to append this box and what the dimensions of this box will be. So let's drag in both our bottom corner and our top corner. And we're going to split those apart because we're going to want those dimensions individually available. For our transform location, it's quite simple. The X of the bottom corner will go into the X and the Z of the bottom corner will also go into the Z. For the Y, it's a little bit more complicated because we want this box to be positioned at the average location of our bottom corner and our top corner. Just showing you here as an example, if this is our bottom corner and this would be our top corner, our Y location should be in the exact middle of those two points. So that is this location and this location taking the average will be the middle. Of course, that's quite simple to get because we simply add the Y locations of both of them together and then we divide them by two. And that will give us the average, which will be our transform Y location. Now, for the dimensions, here we're going to do a bunch of subtraction. We're going to leave the X dimension, which in this case is the depth for the last, because that is uh, slightly more annoying to deal with and to explain. The Y and the Z are somewhat easier, because for those we just take the top right Y and we subtract the bottom Y from that, and that will go into our Y. And for the Z we will do much of the same thing. We'll take our top corner Z and our bottom corner Z will subtract from that, and that will make our Z dimension. Now, the X dimension is a little bit more annoying to deal with because that's not actually uh, concerning the top and bottom. Because the top and the bottom will always be, as we did here at the start of our blueprint, these will always be stuck at one unit. Meaning that they're always going to be stuck on the front of our actor. So what we'll use instead there is we'll use the corner, which also drives the depth of the entire actor, and we will use the X position from this one instead. So we'll take this one and subtract the X position from the bottom left corner or the top right corner. It doesn't really matter in this case because they're both going to be the same value, always going to be one. And then we multiply that by two. The reason we multiply this by two is because the pivot location is set to the center of the bottom face of our box. So the easiest way to make sure that this thing bullions all the way through our entire mesh is just to make it twice as long. Now, finally, we're going to use this to apply our mesh boolean with, and this won't be the target mesh, this will be the tool mesh, because our target mesh, of course, will be the box that we are appending. So let's see if everything we've done so far works. We put in our archway generator and we can see the default values that I gave it are a little all over the place, but uh, this box that we have here definitely seems to be created through those two handles that we have. The only issue is I set it to union, I never set it to subtract mode. So now that we have it in subtract mode, these two handles are used to make our window. So right now we have something that can simply make a window already, which is amazing. But this window is also going to want to have that little round thing on top to really make it like an archway or, again, a more interesting window. What we're about to do, you could uh, set behind a boolean, behind a branch, so you have a blueprint that can make just the square windows or arched windows. It's all about making code that is multi-purpose. So let's allocate another compute mesh because we're going to be doing another boolean operation here. And for this one, we're going to append a cylinder because, of course, we want to uh, have a half circle taken out. And a cylinder is the best base shape to do that with. Now, we want to set the height and the radius and some of the transform stuff. So let's first and foremost uh, worry about the transform. We need to give it its location and a rotation. The rotation we can simply do, the Y is just going to be 90 degrees rotated. That way it's not standing upright, but it is perpendicular to the wall. The location, we're going to uh, make a vector, 
and we need to find the x, y, and z location that we want to set this thing into. And here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the bottom corner and uh, top corner from over there and paste them back here. We could just draw wires all the way from over here to there, but that's a little messy, so I prefer just doing it this way. Cutting in here, because during the initial recording I made a mistake, the Y location that we want is, again, the average between these two points. So, the easiest way to do that is because we already calculated that here, is just to make a reroute node and plug that into there. And if you want to be tidy about all this, uh, of course, you use these reroute nodes to actually reroute things properly. Then our bottom corner x is simply just going to go into the x, because again, the x value of all these components is always going to be 1, so we don't need to do any fancy math for any of that. And then for the z, which is how high up it should be, it should just be on level with our top corner. So we just put that into there. That only leaves us with the radius and the height. And the radius is just going to be the distance between these two points divided by 2. Because, as we know, a radius is half the diameter of a circle. So we want the circle's diameter to be the distance between these two things, so the radius is just the distance between these two divided by 2. So we can take the top y minus the bottom y divided by 2, and that will be our radius... It's just as simple as that, people. It does look a little messy, all this math done on Blueprint, I know. And the height of this cylinder will actually be the same as the X dimension of the append box. So for this one, I'm actually going to uh, draw a wire all this way, just because it's the same value anyway, so why even bother recalculating it, right? And from there, it's really all up to you. Uh, you can say the radial steps which is the amount of sides that your cylinder will have. Usually it's set to 12. Uh, let's set this to 24. It's a little bit higher. The height steps is the amount of subdivisions in the height direction. That doesn't matter for us at all. Uh, we do want to set the origin to being center, though. And then, of course, we want to hook up this allocate compute mesh to our append cylinder. There's one issue, though, and that is now we're appending an entire cylinder. And that could lead us to cutting out things with the bottom of the cylinder as well. We only really want to use the top of the cylinder. And if you've watched the last video, you probably know what we're going to do here. And that is we're going to apply a mesh plane cut. And we will split the structure pin, the make vector that we put here, into our transform location. We're going to actually use that as the frame cut location as well. That way it gets cut off at the exact center point where we put it. We can split the structure pin here, and we say flip cut side because and this is just something you have to mess around with sometimes a little bit the plane cut only leaves one side of the mesh at which it's cutting through sometimes it's going to be kind of tricky just from blueprint perspective to know which one that is so you just have to go into the world check it out and if it's the wrong side you simply check this tick box and it will flip what side gets displayed then this one we will use for our apply mesh boolean as our tool mesh. We'll set it to subtract mode, and then our target mesh is going to be... Where is the last reference to that? Let's see, we have a reference to it here. So, all the way back here. Again, for this kind of thing, it's probably easier to just say at the start here, um, promote this to a variable for target mesh and just reuse that variable every single time. That just makes things look a little bit cleaner. So let's just do that. Replace everything here for target mesh with our variable. Everything that is not a compute mesh, of course. We have this compute mesh here, a pan cylinder. That is not going to um, be our target mesh because it's, well, used for computing, not for actually displaying. Just makes things a little easier to use a variable for this. And then at the very end, uh, we want to release all compute meshes, because otherwise we create a memory leak, and we don't want that. 
And now we have a thing that can make a easy and nice archway. So we can see it can make these very slim and thin things that you might see in like medieval castles. But it can also make these little windows. But, and this is the real cool thing, if you just pull this one down, suddenly it's a door. It's just as easy as that. So you can simply make a door a little like this and slot it into whatever wall you want. Of course, there's a bunch of ways to make this more advanced as well, allow you to put multiple archways into a dynamic mesh like this using arrays and just a bunch of very creative things that you can do with this that I would very much like to leave up to you guys' imaginations. So if you want the project files for this archway, which also includes uh, the ramp builder that we made in the previous video, which again, if you haven't watched that one, you're probably quite lost as to what all happened just now. There is a link down below in the description to my Patreon, which includes a download for this entire project with both of the assets that we have made. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. And a special thanks to my Cave Digger tier Patreons, Sergey Thomas, 